Bonjour tout le monde, donc on est au bout de Lager, on fait présentement une chronique en fait avec euh, Burn Ambassador, donc je présente Ian Allen, plaisir, bienvenue au bout de Lager. Donc ils ont euh, Burn Ambassador de Glenn Murray. Ce soir on va faire un, un masterclass ici même euh, pour environ 65 personnes. Donc euh, welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm very well. Yeah. So actually we just like a few questions. Uh, first of all, like can you tell us about your background and where did you come like to do uh, to be now today like in the whiskey business? Yeah, so uh, well, I kind of spent most of my life in the drinks industry in one way or another. I went to university in Aberdeen, studied a law and management degree, so I would initially aimed for law, but uh, fell in love with alcohol instead, so that was my route defined from that point onwards. I just took a part-time job in a wines and spirits store in Aberdeen while I was at university. I ended up looking after the kind of spirit side of things ended up managing a number of shops around Aberdeen when I graduated and then decided to uh, take a more direct path within the whiskey industry. Moved back home, being born and bred in Speyside, uh, that is kind of the mecca for whiskey, so decided to go home, got a job at uh, the, another distillery, I don't know if I should say their name, but yeah. got a job at the McAllen <laughs> distillery. Yeah. I loved it, we were a great time there, moved across to Glen Murray coming up to 14 years ago now. Wow. And haven't looked back since. And since when you are doing that, like from so, the beginning, so when did you start from McAllen? Actually? I started McAllen in two thousand two. Okay, and so you were making the, the the visit for for everyone that was visiting the, the distillery, right? Yeah, so I managed the visitor center there. There was an element of being involved in whiskey shows around about the UK, so I got a real taste for being involved uh, away from the distillery and being able to talk about brands and products mm -hmm. uh, out about. When I moved across the, across the Glen Murray, there was uh, certainly more of that became part of the job. And ultimately, I've always seen it as um, uh, the same job, really. Whether you're doing it at the distillery or away from the distillery, you're still talking about the product, you just don't have the, the facility of pointing at the stills or parts of the production process. So yeah, so I love it. And it's an opportunity to get out and about, to, to meet guys that you generally wouldn't get a chance to speak to within your distribution. So. Mm -hmm. uh, it creates a more direct connection between market and the distillery as well. So I think it works well and I really yeah. enjoy it. What do you like the most about Lamar? I mean, yeah. like when you made the change from Macaulay to Lamar? It was, it was, was a change. change. It was, uh, you know, there was less marketing money uh, mm -hmm. behind it. So you had to be a little bit wiser about how you spent that money, how you approached the marketing and promotion. Um, and even in my years at Lamar, that has changed new ownership. The focus on the brand and the product has, has become much uh, more defined, much clearer. Uh, the markets have opened up around the world, um, and the opportunity to be involved in that has been the part of Glen Murray that I've enjoyed the most. And just to see see a product which I always loved, uh, Glen Murray whiskey, to, to just see it flying, to see it out in a global mm -hmm. scale is uh, quite exciting. And through the last year, I mean, like, like probably like around the world, like you saw like the sales going up, like. Like here in Quebec, we just got like the uh, Glen Murray actually, like the, the port cast, the peated, and the chardonnay yeah. in the last year. And for the quality price, it's like unbeatable right now at the ACQ. Like yeah. you saw like the, the sales going up. And well, I, I have to admit, I'm not involved in sales, so I, I get the nice part of the job. Just like more people getting like yeah, interested so, in the brand. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah the, you know, what we're doing um, out and about, the, the products we're bringing to market, new and interesting expressions. You know, allowing those experiments that were kind of kept kind of hidden in the warehouse uh, out into the light and letting people try them and taste them, whether that be the Chardonnay cask and the port cask in the UK. We just recently launched a, a cider cask, which was uh, very new and innovative, in fact, slightly controversial. But uh, seeing these kind of more experimental things, Graham is always, Graham, our, our distillery manager, is always liked to, to be a little bit playful around the product and to see how it works with different casts and uh, now getting the opportunity to get these out and being able to talk about them is quite exciting. Great. Uh, you told me that it means 14 years that you're for Glen Murray. For, it would be 14 years this year. Right? Great. Flies what is your, you are the most proud in your career at Glen Murray? I, where's the most proud? Um, I think the role I kind of do um, is, is kind of the bigger part of my job is uh, managing the, the visitor center. We, mm -hmm. we, we now see over 24,000 visitors wow. at the distillery from you know, a start to about four or 5,000 visitors. So I'm proud to see that you know, taking off and to, to be working as well as it is. 
and we've got a great team at the distillery that allows me to escape and come out and do stuff like this. So yeah, it's kind of most proud of the, the team and the work they've done and the work we have done at the distillery. It's, it's great to see, um, and yeah, proud to to be to be able to get out and talk about it. You know, the company has. Uh, I put their trust in me to, to yeah. go out there and be the one to uh, speak about the product uh, as often as I can. So, yeah, that's great. And for you, like I mean, like on your personal side, mm -hmm. what are you the most proud? What did you learn uh, that really, like a memorable experience? A uh, memorable longer? experience, uh, or in all your career, actually. Well, the E. I think uh, you know my first international trip. I always look back on that because it's slightly daunting when you. Uh, sent out uh, with a suitcase full of whiskey and have to go and entertain people and uh, keep them keep them interested and help help to promote the brand and you know being able to you know telling the confidence to, to get out and do that I think uh, was a, a proud moment in my career and being being offered that opportunity and the trust within the company to do that I think so that was back in 2009 I did a big whiskey show in Frankfurt which was quite exciting for me at the time. It will be nothing like today. <laughs> but actually, a question that we already like, I always have when I'm making like tasting, yep. presenting whiskey. A uh, question that we often have as as a, as a bartender: uh, How did you fall in love with whiskey? How do you say like that's what I want to do? Uh, I love that spirit. You know, like personally, my dad was not drinking whiskey, and that's what I'm doing like for all my life now. Yeah. So, how did you come to this? How do you like? What was the first whiskey actually that you drank? I, I is it a good experience? It was, yeah. yeah? Uh, we, we, my dad is, is a big uh, single malt enthusiast, so it was always around the house. Being born and brought up in space, I, uh, distilleries are always in your peripheral vision, you know, there's yeah. distilleries everywhere. So, you know, it was always around you. I never quite grasped just how, how big an industry it was. When you're living in amongst it, you, you don't ignore it, but you just don't realize until you actually get working in the industry. But as, as far as falling in love with whiskey, I can remember from a very young age my dad handing me glasses of whiskey and asking me to smell them and occasionally taste them when it was uh, one you wanted to try. I try to remember the first bottle of single malt I, I, I bought to myself, I remember was a Balvenie, because um, uh, I, I got a taste of a Balvenie and I really loved it. Uh, so yeah, I think that was the first bottle of single malt I ever purchased. Like at five years old? No, a little older than that. Uh, so yeah, that was the first one I went out and bought, but the first one I ever tasted uh, back in the hazy days of my youth, I can't remember what it was. Can you tell us a little bit about like, what we'll be tasting today? Yeah, so we've got a nice selection of the range here with us. Uh, throughout we've got, um, we, we've split the range into two or three uh, ranges, so we've got what we call the the classic range, which is their kind of um, non-age statement whiskies, slightly more experimental with their cask finishing process, and these are really kind of flavour-like whiskies that are bringing people in uh, to the single malt category at a, at a very affordable price, but you know great quality um, and different points in the flavour spectrum. So you can choose where you want to come into single malt, and if you are a single malt enthusiast, there's enough there to interest you as well. You know, with um, interesting innovations like Chardonnay cask uh, and a, a peated space out within the classic. We've also got the port finish, um, which is a personal favourite of mine. I think uh, yeah. Glen Murray uh, really shines when it's put into a port cask. We've then got the heritage range, which is our age range, slightly more traditional approach to it, uh, with 12, 15, and 18, um, using bourbon cask uh, majority. The 15 is a mix of bourbon and sherry. But the 12 and 18 are straight bourbon cask maturations, American oak maturations. Mm -hmm. Then we've taken for our prestige the, the Mastery, which uh, is a limited edition which we released in 2017. Uh, Graham Cool, our master blender, pulled together some of our older and rarer stocks to create something to celebrate our 120th anniversary. So that's uh, something we shipped along specially for the trip. Yeah, great packaging. Uh, I, there's none here apart from the ones I shipped over. So this is a little treat we've taken over to, to let people have an opportunity to try. Uh, yeah, sure. There's a limited edition, thousand bottles. A uh, little nod to our um, our history of being quite innovative with cask finishings. We were one of, amongst one of the first distilleries to do finishes. Mm -hmm. uh, what we hadn't done before was bring together different finishes into a final product, and, and Mastery is a kind of 
a note to that part of our history as well. But uh, just a fantastic whiskey um, and looks looks super shiny and it's yeah. nice uh, prestigious packaging. If you have one, actually, like you're somebody like never tastes lumber before, which one you would suggest getting for a first round? I always reach for the 12 uh, If anybody comes up and asks that question, I've never tried Glen Murray. What should I try? I think for me, 12 is, is a kind of flagship single malt for us. Uh, not only does it uh, really show the kind of traditional side of the distillery, but it's also a great expression from space out. It's, mm -hmm. it's got a real kind of traditional space out characteristic, a lovely balance of sweet and spice. And it's got enough uh, richness there to keep the uh, real whiskey enthusiast interested, but there's also a softness to it. That's a great introduction for anybody who's new to, to single malt whiskey as well as Glen Murray. And, and all the other ones, your personal favorite ones? Personal favorite, we'll, we'll take mastery out of the equation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a, uh, um, I, th I think the 18, I yeah. think the 18 uh, for me is just one of these great whiskies which uh, does all the simple things, but it, it does them really well. Uh, you know, there's no, no real bells or whistles to it, it's just a straightforward bourbon maturation. Uh, it's non chill filtered, so you've got that slightly higher strength to it. Um, and yeah, it just it, it keeps things simple but, but really effective. It's, it's a great space idea. If you got the information, do you know where the, the bourbon casks are from? We get our casks from the Space Side Cooperage, so they can come from different uh, bourbon producers. You know, we, we, we say American casks, so I'm being a little bit uh, incorrect in saying bourbon, because we use things like Jack Daniels and things okay. like that, so you, they're not all bourbon casks, American oak casks. Good. Yeah. Like, actually, you know, like this year, I think Lamori made like a, a huge impression actually in Quebec for the price in yep. ACQ. How you will compare, like, what is your uh, number one competition, or how do you compare the Glen Murray to? Um, I, th I think within the single, you know, working in the industry, there's a kind of uh, there's a, a little bit of competition, but it's it's an industry where people are friendly amongst each other. There's a sharing of information, so uh, maybe the higher up the, the kind of ladder you go in the, the corporate structure, you might see them more as competition. I see them more as I uh, kind of uh, friends within the industry. Mm -hmm. Making whiskies great quality single malts, uh, which keeps the category interesting and um, keeps people, you know, you can be a bit migratory around single malts. I uh, so I never like to see any of these competition, but you know, similarities, you know, any kind of the, the kind of nice clean fresh base ciders uh, will be kind of uh, will be seen as or you will compare it to what other brand? A uh, tough one. Um, <laughs> They're, they're all got their own characteristics. I kind of look at I look at the likes of Bob Eni, Glen Grant, Glen Livet, Glen Fiddich, you know, these space ciders that, that produce whiskies of similar style. Yeah. Uh, I would compare them, you know, against the likes of these as a competitive set. Yeah. And what's next for you? Next for me, after or Canada, for Glenn Murray. yeah, for, well, for Glen Murray, we've got um, a, a few interesting expressions which we've just recently brought that we're kind of promoting out and about. Uh, we've got with us the white wine cask finish in the classic, which is a Chardonnay, but we've just recently brought out the Cabernet finish, which is a red wine, and that's a lovely little pairing having the two whiskies together, uh, comparing the, the influence of the white wine and the red wine. So, doing a little bit more talk on that, so a um, little bit of promotion there. So, when I go back uh, a couple of weeks in the distillery before I go off to Italy for a whiskey festival out there. Uh, then back to the US for a whiskey festival there, and then we then move into the Spirit of Space Life Whiskey Festival, which is the, the home festival, uh, which is six days in the beginning of May, which is, uh, for anybody who's not been to Space Life, you know, that is an amazing time to visit. There's events, hundreds of different events, Kayleigh's tasting, first, um, first week in May. Okay. So a uh, great time to visit Scotland, great time to visit Space Side. There's so much to see there. If you're a whiskey fan, it's, it's unmissable. Yeah. And just a question, actually, like, really interesting, actually, you're aging some whiskey and uh, wine cask. Yep. Uh, you will recommend it for pairing with food, or like, you have some pairing that you can suggest us? Yeah, we do some uh, food pairings across the range. Uh, I always find that whiskey works well with uh, kind of you know, little nibbles um, rather than with a full-on meal. Uh, and for me, I think a particularly special pairing is when we pair some seafood or shellfish mm -hmm. with peated classic. Uh, it works really well. 
the M15 with the introduction of the cherry cask in the mix. You, you have a kind of chocolatey note which works really well with desserts, uh, particularly dark chocolate desserts. Uh, 12 year old sweetness, but a crisp, fresh, clean, citrusy note. Uh, again, it makes a good savory pairing, but also another good dessert pairing as well. So. Can you tell us more, maybe like about the peat, ke like the one peat? Yes. That's sir. one of the questions I have because it's not really peated if you compare it with uh, like Le Gavelin, uh, Arbeg. Uh, what is the process for that one? Uh, well, we're using uh, peat that's uh, more local to the distillery. When we're, okay. when we look at the, the, the kind of Isla peats, uh, they, they bring a far more medicinal characteristic yeah. to the whiskey. The germination process allow it to grow. Uh, you've been